If there's one day in the gym that people never miss, it's chest day, but even with consistent effort, most of them fail to see results. In this video, I'll be sharing five tips guaranteed to help you finally achieve noticeable results in your chest, and it has almost nothing to do with the exercises you're performing. But first, let's talk about the anatomy and biomechanics of the chest. The chest is comprised of two muscles, the pec major and the pec minor. The pec major is the big superficial muscle you think about when talking about the chest. The pec minor is actually a smaller, deeper muscle that lies beneath it. Since both muscles are activated with similar movements, we're going to focus on the larger pec major. The pec major itself is divided into two heads, the sternocostal head, which is the main lower portion, and the clavicular head, also known as the upper chest. Both heads are responsible for horizontal adduction or bringing the arm across the body. The clavicular head, however, is also responsible for shoulder flexion or bringing the arm upwards. If you can manage to train these two functions under resistance and progressively get stronger over time, you should have no problem building an impressive set of pecs. But what if you're already performing presses and flies from different angles, yet failing to see any changes in your chest? Well, there is a lot more to optimal chest training than just presses and flies, and that's what I want to discuss today. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Tip number one, train close to failure. To keep it simple, mechanical tension is any force that tries to stretch a muscle while under load. In resistance training, it's the force that occurs within the muscle fibers while you're performing a rep. As your rep speed decreases, mechanical tension experienced by the muscle increases. This is shown by the force velocity curve, wherein muscle force increases as the shortening velocity of the muscle decreases. It's in those high degrees of force production that your muscle fibers experience significant mechanical tension. A systematic review by Schoenfeld and colleagues on decades of studies regarding skeletal muscle hypertrophy showed mechanical tension as the most important stimulus for muscle growth. Beardsley even showed how it might very well be the only driver of muscular hypertrophy, arguing that both muscle damage and metabolic stress only induce growth when metabolic tension is present. Supporting this is a study where the stretching of denervated muscle fibers cause growth without the fiber experience metabolite accumulation and muscle damage. To put it simply, since metabolic stress and muscle damage do very little toward chest development, you won't need tons of volume or insane workloads to experience impressive results. Instead, what you should be doing is training in the 6 to 12 rep range while taking your sets closer to failure. This helps maximize motor unit recruitment, allowing you to produce more force, thereby creating the highest degrees of mechanical tension. To standardize what taking a set close to failure actually means, it's when your rep speed slows down involuntarily. In other words, grinding through a rep while still being able to maintain proper form. The more reps you grind, the more effective reps your chest muscles experience. This is why having a good spotter is important because they give you the confidence to push through a set without having to worry about the set ending with the bar on your neck. Tip number two use a full range of motion. You might think you're training through a full range of motion because you feel a stretch at the bottom when performing flies. But what about the top of the movement? Are you fully shortening your pecs? Depending on your form and the equipment you're using, you might be leaving about 30 degrees of adduction at the top. Given that you've been training for so long, that extra range of motion at the top might be what's missing from your pec training. This might also be the case if you've been spending a lot more time doing barbell and machine presses where your hands are in a fixed position, not allowing you to achieve full adduction of the upper arm. So it might be time to take a rest from barbell bench pressing and incorporate variety into your chest training. Instead, opt for dumbbells, cables, and converging chest press machines as they not only allow a deeper stretch, but these variations allow 
you to get your upper arm further across the body for a more shortened contraction. Tip number three, allow adequate recovery. This graph from a study published in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports shows that the pectoralis major takes longer to recover than every other muscle in the study. At this age, recovery is not as good as it used to be, and even the previously mentioned study had men ages 20 to 25 as participants. Now, let's look at why the chest muscles need more time to recover. First, fast twitch muscle fibers have been shown to recover slower than slow twitch fibers, mainly because of the fast twitch's lower oxidative capacities due to having fewer mitochondria. And looking at this chart, you can see that both heads of the pec major are roughly 60% type 2 or fast twitch. Therefore, less is more when it comes to pec training. While you want to keep intensity high to produce maximal mechanical tension, it might be a good idea to decrease the number of weekly sets you're performing as this will allow the chest muscles to recover fully before another training session. With this, you should also consider adjusting your training frequency to meet the pec's recovery thresholds. Now, while maximizing recovery is essential to growing your chest, you wouldn't want to overdo it by reducing your chest training to once per week. One study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research compared training once per week versus three times per week. They found that subjects who train three times per week experience better hypertrophy than those who train just once per week, despite volume being equal. That said, I recommend training your chest two times per week for no more than 10 total sets and gradually progressing from there. Tip number four, train isolation movements at a high intensity. Many of us train at high intensities when it comes to big compounds like the bench press. But when was the last time you took note of the weight used on a cable fly? For many of us, it may have never even crossed our mind. Keep in mind that compound movements like a flat barbell bench press work not only the pecs, but also the triceps and front delts. So growth stimulus is scattered among the three agonist muscles. If your goal is to grow your chest, then you should not only incorporate more flies into your chest training, but also perform them with the same intensity as you would with compound lifts. Make it a goal to progressively do more work on smaller lifts like machine presses or isolation exercises like dumbbell and cable flies. While it may not be as glorious as hitting a PR on the bench press, those cumulative PRs could be all you need to finally take your chest results to the next level. Tip number five, eat more protein. With your training experience, you're probably already consuming one gram of protein per pound of body weight, but an age-related consideration to make is possible anabolic resistance. Anabolic resistance is defined by a blunted stimulation of muscle protein synthesis rates to common anabolic stimuli in skeletal muscle tissue, such as dietary protein and exercise. Simply put, your body might not be responding as well as it used to when it comes to the amount of protein you consume. Hence, your muscle building capacity in relation to your protein consumption has decreased. Recent data shows that older adults require larger quantities of protein to maximally stimulate muscle protein synthesis compared to younger individuals. The good news is there's a simple solution to this elevated threshold, which is increasing your daily total protein intake. In the same study, 10, 20, and 40 grams of whey protein post-workout increased muscle protein synthesis for older adults. The higher the protein dose, the greater MPS was observed. So my advice is to incrementally increase your daily protein intake, giving yourself several weeks to observe any positive changes and then adjust accordingly. And while building muscle is possible when eating at maintenance or even in a deficit, maximal muscle growth occurs when eating in a surplus. That's why I recommend you aim to consume about 250 to 500 calories above maintenance 
Increase your daily protein intake and consume protein with every meal to keep muscle protein synthesis high throughout the day. So there you have it, five tips to help grow your chest for men over 40. Although they aren't mind-blowing, recent research allows us to understand deeper mechanisms of hypertrophy and apply this newfound information to optimize our chest training in order to achieve the desired result. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you're training consistently and your nutrition is in order, yet you're failing to see noticeable results, check out our science-based recovery stack. With pitch black and maxed out, you'll have your post-workout needs covered with clinically dosed products proven to improve sleep quality, enhance recovery, and increase muscle and strength. And right now, you can get 25% off your entire order. Just head over to musclemonsters.com forward slash supplements or click the link in the description and enter the coupon code MONSTER at checkout. And if you're enjoying the content and want to support the channel, all we ask is that you click the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. Peace.